the way of life. Obviously, the environment down here is all soft. The, the ceiling's soft, the floor's soft, the walls are soft, and to an extent, the air is soft. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. We're doing well. <laughs> So let's see. That didn't move anything. Move window two. Didn't do anything. So let's see if pause and scale, if this does anything. Because that's always the other thing, is <laughs> it just depends on um, you know, we're we have to validate everything because we have absolutely no idea if we're getting overridden by something, if this window even affects the WebKit window. There's a lot of assumptions here that maybe Maybe nothing is going to work. It'd be nice if you could just lock it in some sort of aspect ratio um, guarantee. You know, kind of like the camera. Just an aspect ratio widget. You know, lock to camera. You think that would be something... You think that would be something somebody would have wanted and would have thought about. Hey, maybe this UI should be in the same spot. Nah. It's too hard. All right, we reshape the window. We get the current position. Current size. It didn't do anything. It did absolutely shit nothing. Well, then what the hell is the, the set window size? Like, what the hell does reshape window even do then? Because, like, this doesn't make any sense that it wouldn't do something.
No, no, you can't just lock the aspect ratio of the UI. Like that's that's <laughs> we'd be done if if that was true. Well, all right. Um, that's that's pretty trash. Um, that's not fun at all. But it's also something that we don't necessarily have to fix in this case. Because what we can do... So we can fix this inside of um, we can fix this inside of the UI itself. That seems like a strange amendment. There's a lot of strange omitments inside of Slate. It's it's retarded. All right. So is there a getter on our UI HUD? Yeah, there is. All right, we should definitely have like um, set a resolution, and um, what we can do is we can resize our div inside of our web web view. That's another option. Just kind of throw a parent on it and lock the aspect ratio of that parent. So let's um, let's do that. Because I don't want to spend two million years screwing around slate. Like, if it's not working, it's not working. It's going to take two million years for me to understand Slate. It's not really worth it because we're not using Slate. We're using WebKit. So what I should do is boot up the local UI. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit this stuff.
So what, we have our master content body, we have our contents and all this sort of stuff. How come we can see any of this stuff with a... All right, so all we have to do is call in and change our stage width and height, looks like. And um, we'll be okay. So we definitely want to call... Um, I want to call something that's going to set our style. So we want to make a function which allows the UI itself to tell us um, the size of the window, or we can make it so the page itself detects its own size. Um, we probably want to have it detect its own size. So if we go to our scripts, So let's see, window resize. So we need to get the stage. Hmm. I'm using the window size for a lot of the styling stuff, which sucks.
So let's see the So we actually do like the CSS So we can set the offset just fine. That's that's not an issue. So what we're going to have to figure out is how to, we want the scales of these things, these objects, based on the size of the, the stage, not the size of the window itself. And these elements here are their left and right. These are based off of the the screen size. It's like they're set based on the screen width. Yeah. Well, is it such a bad, bad deal there? Alright, so let's get the float aspect. Get window size, jQuery. Let's see. Window dot height size of the entire window, which is what we want. So basically we're going to have the bar um, width height, so we're going to say width equals window dot width height equals window dot height. So this is going to be width divided by height
So, um, we want our um, we want to set our stage width and height to the width and height, but basically we want to lock it. So this will be like max max aspect and min aspect. So if aspect is less than min aspect, aspect equals min aspect. If aspect is greater than max aspect, then aspect equals max aspect. So for this to work, basically the width is always going to be the window width, but we want the height to be different. Or it's more, it's more actually the, um, So if our aspect ratio is greater than our max aspect, then we are too wide and we are going to want to move in the, our width is going to be clamped to, to the two. So, um, all right, so if it's, if it's too narrow, then our Y needs to be clamped. So we're going to take the width and multiply by min. So it's going to be like stage width equals width, um, stage height equals width times aspect. And then what we need to do is um, our offset, our stage offset X is going to be the, oh, the difference, it's going to be It's going to be our um, our height minus our stage height um, divided by two, and well, our offset x is going to be zero. Our offset y is going to be this height minus height. All right. So if aspect is greater than max aspect, then our stage width is our stage height is going to equal height and our stage width is going to equal our uh, height times the aspect and our offset X is going to be the thing that changes this time it's going to be our height minus our, our width minus stage width. And our offset y will be zero. So we should set our, our stage width and our stage height here So let's see if I can actually add this in here. Stage offset X plus picks and stage offset Y plus picks.
And of course I reverse these things as I do. All right, so if we get too wide, we all of a sudden do that. If we get too narrow, we all of a sudden do this. Now what is going on with our little red icon thing there? It's all sorts of screwed up. And um, that's going to be called on every resize. So what we want to do is we want like a function set min aspect. And that's going to take our min aspect. And function set meh. Let's just call set aspects. We have min and max. And we're going to set these things. So min aspect equals min aspect. And max aspect equals max aspect. And then we're going to call on resize. And we need to, it's globals.js that has all of our global variable stuff. And our stage div jQuery should be, we should be using that instead of like, all the rest of this garbage. Alright, so now let's figure out why our red little bar thingy is screwed. What's it called? Is this Screen Shield 2? No, it is not. It's our selector. So let's see what actually controls that. Is it input? So we have our selector widget, and our selector widget is getting set to these things. It's is the selector widget just um I mean is its position relative or Absolute. Okay, we need to add in the offset. Selector widget dot offset. Selected widget outer width outer height is the width and height of the object. The position is the selected widget offset. We're gonna need this offset is we need to actually subtract the the top and left of the the window for this thing so 
we're going to want to grab the stage offset and that's here so So we're going to have position, so if our stage pause is this, so it's going to be like position e dot top minus equals stage pause dot top and position dot left minus equals stage pause dot left. Let's see if that does it. All right, so that looks that looks pretty good. I mean, we're what I'd like to do is see if we can do something about this font sizing. So let's see, it's one VW. Is there like HW? Is this scale based on the height? And this scale is based on the width? Alright, so let's see, is it um, CSS VW? All right, the viewport area, this is the screen size minus, so. All right, so if we used V min, So it's not doing anything. And then it gets, so yeah, if we use vmin, it looks like it'll scale this thing appropriately with our, yeah, okay, cool. So it's just a two vmin is what we need. All right, let's pop it up in the game and see what it looks like.
So what is wrong with this? It is... It's not correct. What is our... it's 1.5 for our min aspect ratio. Oh, that is odd. As we get... As we get, like, super small, we're actually clipping. Does that happen inside of... Inside of this as well? No, it doesn't. That looks like just math errors, like precision issues. Oh wait, we've got a scroll bar here. Okay, so that's probably what's going on is we've got this scroll bar. It's when we're it's this big blob thing at the top. What is that toolbar doing anyway? So we want like our toolbar style We want the overflow hidden. Well, that didn't work. I don't understand why this didn't work. This should have the overflow should be hidden. Well, is it which thing has the scroll bar? Is it this guy that has the scroll bar? Yeah, okay. So it's he he's got the scroll bar. So that looks like it's doing what it should. That it all like snaps back into place is really not a problem. Like how often do you resize a window in a game? And when you do, do you really expect stuff to look proper? No. I don't at least.
So there is a bug there where um, it's kind of bad practice to lock everything in on an engine level for stuff, right? Like if you're, if kind of like your game just cannot support multiple resolutions, um, it's that's a big problem or it can be really limiting later um, so like if Adam comes to me and he says like I want the game only on these like aspect ratios like great we can do that but if you know he says something else later or something of like I want you know this thing other thing to work differently and then I have to say like um yeah we can't do that then it's a big problem or like let's say we want to go release on something else like if we want to release on nintendo switch and it has a different aspect ratio than what we support all of a sudden like everything looks like shit so it's better just to keep a clean house that way you can you can deal with whatever stuff comes down the pipe so we may lock it later but it's not like it wouldn't look decent um, at something else on some other ratio so what I need to do here is I need to, this selected stuff is eating our inputs on, on things when it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, basically like it, your engine should support stuff if it can, unless there's a good reason not to. And that's just kind of what you should do. Is it inside of the input stuff that has the key up and key down states and if we actually send stuff? Because what's happening is when I pop the screen I should get controller input back to bitey but he's not getting it. So there's something wrong with our input manager. Selector. Let's 
So why isn't our key, our key, why are our keys not doing what they should be doing? Because like, the A key is not getting overridden, but the arrow keys are getting overridden. So it's like, our axis events aren't getting set or something like that. I don't see anything in here with selected like we've got setup buttons and we've got like set buttons got add buttons and remove buttons like we can select widgets and all that sort of stuff Well, let's take a look. I can move and it's like key left, key up, down, jumping works. But as soon as I create a screen, Yeah, it's not getting the key downs on specifically the arrow keys. Like, we're getting everything else but arrow keys. Yeah. <laughs> alert, you're allergic to sunlight? That's not good. That's not good at all. You might, you might be evil. 
It might be a vampire. All right, so something is very specifically tied to our Tied to our arrow keys. And our left stick axes. Which makes no sense to me why our controller itself would have these sorts of events. Anyway, I'm going to need to take a very short break here. So, I will be back in just a minute or two. So I probably got something, I probably have some code that I added somewhere which is stopping some of the propagation and it probably has a lot to do with the UI window. 
Hmm. It's just odd how it's... Well, let's just go to our input mapping. 